Now that we're loading our API data into our component, we want to be able to scroll through the page and load more. So that way we can scroll through all of our uh, React top news stories. And to do this, we'll implement infinite scrolling. And the component we'll use for this is an open source package called React Infinite Scroll Component. And the interface is actually pretty small. You just pass the length of your items, which we have, a fetch function, which we have, a has more, which we actually don't have yet. We'll need to calculate if there are more pages or not, a loading icon, which we'll build using CSS animations, and then you can add an ending message. There are also some things to do a pull down to refresh, but we'll leave that out for now. And then you wrap your items in this, and then that way, as you scroll through the items, it will know how to load more. So now let's add the React Infinite Scroll component. And we know that we'll need to calculate uh, if we have more stories. So we will add reselect to do that calculation. And we'll go over that in just a minute. So while that's downloading, let's take a look at how we'll calculate if we have more stories. And to do this, we'll use a selector. And what a selector means is a way to calculate derived data from your Redux store. So we, we have a full list of story IDs, and then we have an array of stories. And we know we'll have more pages if the array of stories has a shorter length than our story IDs. So let's begin by using create selector from reselect. And what reselect is, is a great library to compute this derived data through selectors. And it will also allow you to memoize the results. And what this means is it will just store them in memory. So every time you have a re-render or something changes, if the input doesn't change, we know that the output won't change. And then therefore it will just use the result previously calculated instead of calculating new ones. So this can uh, give you huge performance benefits on the front end, so you're not doing these unnecessary calculations. And so what, how reselect work, it works is it builds up uh, on top of previously calculated values. And we know the calculated values we want are our story IDs. So we'll create a story IDs selector, which comes from our state story story IDs and we'll want a story selector. And what this is, is just getting these default values, uh, base values from our state, state.story.stories. And now we'll create a selector to calculate the derived data using uh, this base data. So const has more stories selector equals create selector. And then what this function does is it takes any number of arguments and then it will calculate uh, derived data and pass it through to the uh, function that is the final argument. So we'll have story IDs selector, stories selector, and then the final value is always a function. So you can have as many of these arguments as you want, but the last value always has to be a function. And it will be story IDs dot length is greater than stories dot length. So if we have more IDs than stories, it's true. And the parameters, parameters to this function are story IDs and stories. And we can see that from the first value in our create selector function is this story ID selector, which returns story IDs. And this maps to the first value in this function. And the stories is the second, which maps to this value. Let's import this in our app component in the index. So import has more stories selector from store story selectors. And then inside here, we just say has more stories has more stories selector and you pass it the state and then this will pass the state to the initial values and then that will build up our selectors eventually resulting in this final value 
Pasta has more stories. And since we are getting more pages, we'll also want to add the fetch stories action, which will take the story IDs and the page. And we'll dispatch our fetch stories action. Story IDs and the page. And this should be what we need to get has more stories and then fetch the stories on subsequent page loads. The other thing recall that we needed is a loader. And for this, we'll use something a little more fancy. Instead of just saying loading, we'll actually build uh, three dots that will bounce as the story loads. So let's maybe take a quick look at this. If you can see at the bottom, when it loads, we'll get this visual effect. So let's build that now. Inside of our components, create a loader folder, make an index.js and a styles.js file. So inside the styles, we will import our styled object. And now we'll also use a keyframes function. And what keyframes is, is it allows you to define uh, CSS animations. So let's do that now. We'll call this animation blink keyframes. And we'll have at 0%, we'll start with an opacity of 2. At 20% of the animation, we'll have an opacity of one. And then at 100% of the animation, we'll have an opacity of 0.2 again. So what this is saying is when, it, when the animation begins, start the opacity at 0.2. So have the dot barely showing. Then once it's uh, gotten 20% of the way through the animation, have the opacity up to one. Then once it's completed the animation, have it uh, drop back down to 0.2. So it'll fade up and fade back down. Let's also create an animation style component, which will be a div. We'll center everything within this. And then inside of it, we'll have three spans just with periods in them representing the dots. So we'll have a span and then I'll just type out all this quickly. We want to use our theme again and we'll return theme text secondary color. Display them inline block so that we can uh, change the height of the spans, which you can't do with inline elements. Margin left four pixels, margin right four pixels. We'll make them uh, very large dots, so 80 pixels, and shrink the line height to just 0.1 so they're not stretched beyond what they need to be. And now we set the animation name. And for this, we use Blink, which was generated by the Styled Components package. So it'll have a separate name when it's actually on the DOM, but we know it will, it will represent this Blink variable. Animation duration. 0.1, or sorry, one second. Animation iteration count. And we want this to go infinitely, so it will continue to just show this loading effect while, while our uh, animation is on the DOM. Animation fill mode to both. And then also, to stagger it, we don't want them to all run the exact same animation at the exact same time. So we'll have three dots. The first one will run normally, so we won't change it there. Then we'll say for the second dot, the nth child two, we'll, we will create an animation delay of 0.2 seconds. So it will start 0.2 seconds after the first one. And then the third span 
an animation delay of 0.4 seconds. So then this will create that staggered effect. Now inside of our loader, we can uh, import React from React. We'll have our loader component. which will be the animation. Then we'll just have these three dots and that's our loader. Let's import this inside of our app component. And let's also import our React Infinite Scroll component. So import Infinite Scroll from React Infinite Scroll component. All right, now our list here, instead of just having it by itself, we will wrap it in our Infinite Scroll. And then the props it takes are data length, which are just the length of the stories, the next function. And for this, we'll want to add some logic around our fetch stories. So let's create a fetch stories function inside uh, our class, which we'll call fetch stories as well. And using this special arrow function syntax, it automatically binds the value of this. So if you see that, that's why we um, have it set to an arrow function. This is some newer syntax. Const story IDs, page, fetch stories prop, and the is fetching flag. Then we say if we're not fetching, fetch stories using our story IDs for a given page. All right, so now we have the next function handled. Has more is equal to our has more stories prop. Make sure you destructure it from the props. We want to use our loader that we just created. That would be the bouncing dots. And finally, we'll just add a little inline style to this uh, infinite scroller. Make sure the height takes 100%. And keep the overflow visible. All right. Looks like everything compiled successfully. And there we go. We have our loading animation, it's waiting, and it loads more stories. So we can do this and eventually scroll through all uh, top 500 stories.